Have a seat right here. Have a seat. Have a seat. Should be dry enough. Have a seat. All right, everybody, we're going to get started in the tinker yard this morning with a couple of jobs. So again, the jobs are um, mulch team and specifically where I need the mulch. Remember, we've talked about in the muddy areas. So if you see an area that um, looks like it would get people's feet a little dirty, then I need you to get the mulch in there because that means water's collecting there and we need to make sure that our site is nice and level, okay? Um, there are also some other places in the tinker yard that uh, will collect water if it rains. So I want you to try and identify those and you can drop some mulch there as well. Um, we have these crescent shapes here and the crescent shapes are going to be used um, at the top of the garden bench. So I will have a team helping to install those. We also have our hinges that need to be installed. So I will have a team working with the drill over there, Mr. Mather. And you have the green uh, cross pieces that need to be attached. Exactly. Outside of the metal mesh. Exactly. Uh, so there's a lot going on with the garden bench this morning, but still we have more people working than can crowd around that activity. So we're gonna have a crew that's gonna shoot some scenes for our playbook video series which some of you have been helping to write the scripts for. So I've got a small but high quality camera that Ms. Bryant bought for the engineering lab and we'll be using that to make some scenes for these videos. We'll be shooting more of this next week too, but we're gonna go down and start with the architecture station with a small crew that's gonna demonstrate ideas of how to use the architecture station. All right, so the last thing I forgot to mention is the black uh, border over there, the garden border that was in Noah's drawing needs to be cleaned up and then we'll need to cut it and go ahead and tack that in place with the hammer. Okay, so I will need some people up holding that and uh, somebody who's doing some hammering for me. Okay, so there's a lot that has to go on. Um, very quickly on my mulch team, I need a crew chief. So I would like for Sam, would you be crew chief on, on mulch, please, sir? Okay, so would you go collect the tools necessary to lead your team? It's important to give the students leadership opportunities out in the tinker yard and elsewhere in the classroom, especially if there are areas where I may not be monitoring as closely because I am busy working with power tools or working with a small group on accomplishing a particular task. I want the students to feel like they own their section and they are going to control what happens. They know where the tools are. They know how to, how to uh, handle that particular task so that they don't need me for that. And I think that that's important too because for safety purposes as well as for giving them ownership of the project. I want to show you how to add your, when you get ready to change a drill bit. So um, what I tell you what, let's make a spot for those so you don't have to hold them. Okay, put that under there. Um, when you get ready to change a drill bit, a drill opens and closes its mouth right here. Um, this is called the chuck and it tightens and opens by turning this, okay, by turning the chuck. So you can slide your drill bit inside once the mouth is open large enough, once the chuck is open large enough, and then you can tighten it back down, okay. Now, this particular uh, bit is for a smaller screw like this size here okay the one that is in this one is for a slightly larger size screw so when you use these screws here which drill should you use that yeah one. why there's a large screw in there because if you use uh, hang on hang on I hear a lot of people talking at one time why am I using this one for the small ones that's what you told me Maya well, yeah, the drill, the bit on the end, the driver bit on the end is smaller. You're right. So this one fits this size screw, okay? And this one fits this size screw. So you know when I ask you to go get a, a, a drill what we're looking for. Now, I have a question for you. Which size screw do you think, if we need to, to put this in place, and we labeled them yesterday when the class cut them, if we're going to put this in place here, Another aspect that was going on in the Tinker Yard today is we were working on um, some of the steps to completing the garden bench uh, and that was adding the hinges and um, adding uh, the door handles and starting to put some of the sculptural elements up on the top. 
This is a support piece that will help keep our bench nice and strong. Okay, so I would like for Avery, would you grab the correct drill to put in the long screw for me, please? Excellent, somebody was listening. Excellent job, all right. So now what I need for you guys to do is I need for you to line up behind Myron for me. Line up behind Myron. Everybody's gonna get a little bit of a turn, okay? All right. Myron, we're gonna jam that in there and very quickly on this drill, you have different speeds for which you can cause the drill to go. We're gonna just leave that alone, but you do need to know this is forward. The button here goes forward and there also is the trigger right here that spins it, okay? All right, so Myron, you're gonna pull the trigger for me, okay? Let's see here, go ahead. Excellent, nice work. I think whenever you let a student use a power tool, there's, at first, there's some safety things that you absolutely have to cover. They're also, they need to know what the different parts are called so that when they are needing a tool from someone or needing something done to the tool and they have to ask a peer to help out with something, it gives them the vocabulary and then the power. Vocabulary is power. So giving them the power to be able to ask for what they need is very important. Also, giving them the ability to use the tool in a structured way is important too, so that they know exactly what the tool is designed to do, they know what their body is designed, how their body is designed to use the tool, and they know uh, then how to properly do it. It's, it. It all is important for them understanding what the mission of the project is too, how that tool integrates into that. And so it's important to stop and have those conversations, even though it takes time and class periods are usually short, it's important to go through that. If you guys would come on over here and all right, so 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 when when we're putting them up here, some of the shapes you guys told me over there could go on like this. Some of the shapes might go on like that. Okay, are you guys paying attention, Nia? So some of the shapes might go on like that. Some up, go ahead, Maya. I like that idea a lot. So, yeah, but maybe when they're in the middle of using them, they have a place to put them. I like that idea a lot, Maya. So, so what I think what Maya's proposing is maybe some one of them hangs out so that you could hang a plant or hang something on it. So, um, what I would like to have happen, we need the the one of the longer screws. Um, so, I would like for Biko, would you go get the drill? that has the longer uh, driver bit in it over here. And By Myron, would you go get uh, one of the longer screws for me, please? Thank you. And let's go ahead and get one of these in. Avery, would you come stand right here for me, please? Climb up on the bench and come stand right here. Careful, 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 over here. It's not gonna break, it's pretty strong. I've, I've been up on it, my knees on it. Okay, come stand closer to this side for me, please. Okay, um, guys, do you have it? So I want you to position this one where you think it would go. And Maya and team on the ground, would you guys tell her when you like what you see? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. Additional group was working on directing mulch into the garden bench area and ar around uh, the tinker yard where uh, grading or leveling of the property needed to happen. And we've had a whole lesson on, on why you do that and what's necessary to figure out whether you need um, more mulch in that area. So the Tinker Yard does invite a lot of playful exploration and experimentation. On the other hand, it's not a free-for-all zone. And because it's right outside the engineering lab windows, we get to observe how some teachers use that with their groups. And some teachers really do use it as a teaching tool. And other teachers bring their kids out there like it's simply another playground. And so we thought that we were probably, at this point, needing to create an instructional video series, which we're calling a playbook on video. And that way the teachers, before they take a class out there, can see some ideas of how to use the Tinker Yard. And so the students, the second graders, are actually writing the script as they sort of show their favorite things and discoveries that they've done, they've made out in the Tinker Yard. And we've been for a couple of weeks getting them to show us what they like to do and articulate why they do those things and how they make those choices and how they work together. 
we've been practicing, and Joshua and Ellis uh, know this in particular, to use our good vocabulary since we're making an instructional video for all the kids, including the littler kids at school. I want you to say what you're doing as you do it. Remember this? We've been practicing. So uh, when you get the materials from the bins, I want you to talk about why you're making the choices you're making. And then when you're building together, don't just build, but say what you're doing as you do it, because then I can get it on video. I, I and, watch a lot of cooking and never say Like that. a cooking show, Ellis, and exactly. Never, and never say no. And only say yes. Say yes and. Say yes and. and. We like that, that language. There. That's right. OK, let me tell you when my camera is on. And begin. My name is Joshua. And I'm going to be on the T.R. show. Hello, my name is Ellis. My advice is to have fun. I'm Elias, and my advice is to have fun. I'm, I'm, my name's Alexandria. My advice is to have fun. Let's see you guys do it. So we get a paint stick. Should we make a home? And we're going to make a little TV. Yeah, TV. And we're going to put it on the little tire thing. So, guys, make the base. We're making the okay, base. We're making the base like kind of the floor. Now I am. I hear good communication. I also want to hear when you need help, Elias. When when you need help, ask for it. Okay, that's good communication too. Design this TV so it can stand up straight. Wait, no. Now we're gonna get, now I'm getting. Okay, this isn't working. The group I was filming for the instructional video series was at the station that we call the architecture station. Improvisational architecture, and of course, kids love to build forts. So we've provided bins that are bins the parents uh, of the community actually made out of old pallets. And in those bins, they find bamboo, sculpted wood. Uh, a whole range of eclectic materials that they can use to fabricate structures that they can get inside of many times. So it's like, you know, making, they call them often teepees, uh, forts. And so this group was making choices about what they wanted to build and how they wanted to do it together. And I was asking them, because I was running a small video camera to capture their work, to say what they were doing as they worked. And then at some points we also stop and assess not only their design decisions, but how they're communicating, the language they're using, because we do want this to be a model for the other and sometimes younger students. That looks like more than decoration. It looks like it's going to actually stabilize your structure. Yeah, it also stabilizes it just in case the now string falls apart. This can so also it, still stand up. So it's big enough. Ryan, let's try it. The, the, the triangle, triangle square steady and bamboo is right, yeah, not it, steady. Okay. And right now, now oh Lice is tying this to the back, oh so it'll be a little stable. Now, now I'm going to scoot it over, and I'm going to scoot this right here. Kind of getting so like, Need help? We can put the ladder in, and we can put one more little it's heavy. Like, bamboo and stuff. There you go. Wait, okay, because so now I have this. Wait, wait, wait. Now this big stick, so it won't take I, really long to um do this oh, nice. thing. So I'm gonna get it kind of big Wait, right Alexandra. here. Maybe we cool. could put this right there and put that somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's flip cool. it over it's kind of like so we can tie. Little so that is our little door, door, and I'm gonna put this right here. Wait. Wait, I'm putting this lattice over here. And then so it's like bird. And this no, part is going to be like fence. bird. No, we're going to put that big one over here, here on here. Because so it's big like okay. fall Wait, and do stuff bad. Good, good teamwork. Bad. Teamwork. Wait. Put it right there. Now we're putting yeah. this big piece of wood right here. It may actually balance. Yeah. Yeah. Is that really going to stay? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's why we have a lot of material no, to so, kind of hold so it. Because if we have more material, because if we have more material, it will be it will be more steady and it and it and, I can, and, it, can, and it can actually stay on there and not fall off. I just put a bucket right over here by this little piece of. Uh, I just hit the pause. Let's circle up and have a little discussion of what we've done so far, what you guys have built so far, and how you've done it. So come over here, would you? Just kind of like take a knee, but not in the mud. Like we do in sports, we say take a knee. Okay, so I, this is off for the moment. Um, great job so far. 
I've got some really good clips that I think we'll use for the instructional videos to show. I like the cooperative language I'm hearing. I like that you're asking each other for help when you need it. And we did say no. I didn't hear anybody say no to each other's ideas. That's good cooperative language. Um, so let's turn around and look at what you've got so far because it's growing pretty fast right now. And as you're being designers of this, for one thing, I can tell that you are experienced Tinker Yard builders because what you're doing shows a certain kind of confidence and that's what we want to show the other students in the other classes who yeah. don't get to come out and use the Tinker Yard as much as you have. Yeah. So you're being good confident designers, collaborators, and I hear that in how you're talking and how you're moving with confidence from the bins, from the storage bins and over to your work area. So right now I want you to pause and assess what you've built without, without considering building onto it right away just circle around it and look at it with a critical eye and see how you might improve it and then continue. Even talk to you, each other about that. Okay, hit the pause button again, guys. Hit the pause button. Good. So what you're doing now is real interesting to have on our instructional video because we call this re-engineering. You have built, you have designed, and now you're editing your original ideas to make it more stable and to make it look the way you want it to look. So that re-engineering step happens a lot on the tinker yard. It's always part of tinkering. When you're tinkering, you make a change and then you say, maybe I'm gonna take part of that back and change it again. Yeah. So this is a good part of your process to have on camera. We saw that there was too much labrys, so we were like, we could lattice. take some. Lattice? Yeah, we huh? could, that we could take some off. And we took okay. some off. Yep, that's good. That's good re-engineering and good design discussion. We could kind of take some of this lattice off so we could keep the door, so this could kind of be the door, because it's kind of a well, door. Okay, so like... let me make a suggestion. Um, I kind of like the way it looks right now, and I challenged you and asked you a minute ago, can you still get inside it? Yes. And I, I heard yes, but now I'm wondering. It looks a little tight. We could go... I don't... Take, take how like many? How many five... of you can still fit inside it? Probably like, like one see, or two. Watch. Show me. How about just show me? Wait, not this Show time. the camera. I'm going to get this running again. Uh, okay, only one person. At a certain point, watching the students build, I find that they then start to edit their creation. And they start to subtract and not just add elements. So the language that I was offering them was to re refer to this as re-engineering. And this is something that we see students on the Tinker Yard doing constantly. They, they create and then they step back and they make different choices or the, a friend that's working with them suggests a different way of doing something. So they're re-engineering, they're um, making something that serves their purposes more closely. Uh, at one point I asked them, did they intend for everyone in their collaborative group to be able to get inside their structure? And they said yes, but then they discovered that they actually didn't fit. So then they started to reconfigure what they were building so that it could work that way. Raise your hand if you are on the black border crew, the washing. It looks a lot better, and once it dries, we'll be ready to put it up. So give yourself a bat on the back. Thank you very much. Raise your hand if you are on my handles and hinges crew. Awesome. You guys did a really nice job today. Also, do you guys notice the yellow uh, handles that are on the bench over there? Oh, yeah. They did a really nice job. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Excellent job. Excellent job. And we started adding the yellow crescents up at the top. It looks really nice. You guys did great work today. All right, so you should be facing forward, please, behind Ellis. And Nia, you can go ahead and take a front, front drive there. And yes. Uh, we will have a moment for you to wash your hands when you go inside. Uh, by one moment, that's literally what I mean. You have about 30 seconds to do that. And then I need you back in your seat. Okay, and we'll get started inside. Okay, let's go. Ah, uh, and please no hand dryers. I'll be out with some paper towels for you, okay? Yes, yes.